Hi, it's Mr. Anderson and this is AP Physics Essentials video 39. It's on forces, which are pushes or pulls on an object which cause them to accelerate or change their velocity over time. So I'm going to apply a force to the left side of this object right here and you can see that it accelerates and then it decelerates. And so we're having a change in the velocity over time. So what caused that acceleration? Well, that was the force of me pushing on it. What caused it to slow down? There must have been an opposing force, a frictional force that caused it to slow down. Let's say I apply a force pulling on that, on that object from above. We can cause an acceleration in that direction. Let's say I remove that force, it falls back to Earth, so there must be a gravitational force that's pulling it down. And so if we look at an object, and an object as it moves over time, if there's an acceleration, then we know that there's a force acting on it. Now you might ask yourself, what if it's just moving? Is there a force acting on it? Remember, things can have inertia. And so the Earth continues to spin, not because something's pushing on it, it just has inertia. So there's not a force pushing on it. Or if you throw an object, it's just going to keep going in that direction. And so to really understand if there's a force acting on it, it's important that we see a change in the velocity which is not only a change in the magnitude of the velocity, but it could be the direction of that velocity as well. But once we've tracked down a force, it's going to have two components, the magnitude of the force and then the direction in which that force is acting. And so we measure that in newtons in a physics lab. And so here's three scenarios where we could see forces if you're pulling on a pulley, if we have a box that's falling to earth, or if we have two magnets that are pushing on each other and kind of pushing against each other. And so you can think of a force as a push or a pull on an object that's causing an acceleration. And so a good way to study forces is to look at motion and try to figure out where are those forces. And so right, we, right here we have a purple object that's at rest. And so what you should do is take a second to figure out all the forces that are acting on that object. Well, you might say it's clearly not accelerating, so maybe there are no forces acting on it. But if I were to magically remove that table, you know it's going to move down, especially if it's sitting on our planet. And so there must be a force acting down, and so we call that a gravitational force acting down. And in a previous video, we defined the gravitational force as a product of the mass of the object, times the gravitational field strength. And so let's say I gave you the mass of that object to be one kilogram. You could calculate that force or the weight of the object as one kilogram times the gravitational field strength, which is 9.8 newtons per kilogram. And so that would be a force of 9.8 newtons down. Now, is it accelerating down through the table? You would say no. It's staying there, and so there must be an opposite force in the other direction. We call that a normal force that's holding it in place. And so those would be the two forces. Now they're not causing an acceleration because they're balanced at this point. Let's say I were to take my cursor here and then just kind of apply a force to that object like that. And so we get a motion that looks like that. What you want to figure out is all the forces that are acting on that object. So let's move it back to its original position. If you were to label all the forces that are acting on that object, right when I hit it with the cursor, what would the forces be? Well, we've already, we've already kind of determined that there's going to be the force down, the gravitational force, and then we have that normal force that's, that's pushing up. But there is this impact of my cursor on the left side of that object, and so there's going to be a force to the right. It's causing an acceleration. It has zero velocity at the beginning, but it has an acceleration to the right. So let's move that object a little bit further along. Now it's slid off of the side of that table. How many forces are acting on that object now? Well, clearly gravitational force is acting on it. But you can see it's starting to move down because there's no normal force anymore. Now, is there a force to the right anymore? No, it just has inertia in that direction, so there'd only be one force at this point. Let's say we take these charged particles, and let's just watch their motion for a second. So we can see that they're all accelerating. So let's take a look at those. Positives seem to move to the right. Negatives move to the left. So what could cause that? What might be the forces that are acting on that? That's going to be the force of the electric field. So these are clearly in an electric field. And so that's causing a movement or a force to the right on the positive particles and a force to the left on the negative particles. And it's causing that acceleration of those objects. Let's say we were to look at just the moon and watch the moon as it orbits around the Earth. Obviously everything's not to scale, but it has a constant speed. It looks like it's not accelerating. And so is there a force that's acting on that moon? You might say, well, since it's going the same speed over time, there's maybe no force acting on it. But if we were to look at that velocity of the moon, the velocity is in that direction. 
But as it starts to orbit around the Earth, the velocity is going to change. In other words, the velocity is going to start to point down in this direction. And since velocity is a vector value, there must be an acceleration. And so that means there must be a force on that object. Just like when you go around the corner in a car, you can feel that force kind of the car pushing on you. And so in this case, it would be the gravitational force that is holding that moon in place. And so did you learn what a force is? Again, it's a push or a pull on an object. And could you express that as both the size or the magnitude? And we determined that mathematically and the direction. I hope so. And I hope that was helpful.